All right. So, do you want to you still have both? Can I present? Okay, you're the host again. Okay, and you're still doing the recording. All right, well, anyway, thanks for coming tonight. Um, I'm going to share the first part a little bit about using the um, and how to just quickly be able to try to find someone a name that you can take to the table. Um, so if I share my screen, desktop, okay. All right, so I go, hmm. All right, so this, I can't see me at all. So I'm just gonna just talk and if something's out of whack, you let me know, okay? So if you go to your family search page, um, you can quickly go to Temple up here at the top and you can look at what you might have already reserved and um, you can see which ones you've already completed. But going down to the bottom when ordinance is ready is where I will often go if I don't have something already done. Hey, um, real quick, sorry to interrupt, yes. Joan. Um, we're, we're logged into Family Search. Oh, yeah, never mind. I, I see that. It's just you just yeah, there it is. Okay, we, we had just minimized it so I couldn't see. Okay. So yeah, okay. your Family Search is open. Yeah, I click on search, I click on temple. Temple, and then... I didn't even click on search, but temple and then this ordinance ready is where you need to be to be able to see this this screen that's, that has the different ordinances, baptisms and confirmations, initiatory, endowment, sealing to parents and sealing to spouse. So I'm dying to get to the temple and I'm thinking the first thing I want to do is initiatory and maybe I can have some names ready then to be able to do endowments. So I'm just going to choose initiatory. You can choose any of these that you want to. It is going to look for names. It'll first look in your own family tree for names that can be done. And then if there aren't any, which sometimes in my stuff there aren't, but then it'll go out to things that are temple ready. So it will be still be able to grab some names for you. But I like to do names that are connected to my family trees somehow. But I'm just going to go ahead and click initiatory. And it... hmm. okay, so it grabbed five names right here that are ready for initiatory. Um, and one of the things I like to do before I just get them ready to print and take to the temple is um, I like to just check my check them to make sure that the ordinances are being done in the order that they're supposed to be. Because I have done this before where there have been ordinances, like it'll give me an endowment, but the initiatory hasn't been done. So I like, to, I like to keep them in order, even though this generates this, I don't know that they've gotten the glitches to keep that clean like that. So let me just first go learning about her and I'm just gonna click on her name and it'll open another window for her. And from here, just so that I can see, sometimes you can see how many sources that might tell you very quickly and then down this side, you know, what kind of information was generated from specific sources, but going over to ordinances, the top left or the top right choice right here in the gray bar. If you check ordinances with the temple, it will pull up her status. Um, I want to make note that this legend over to the right is where you can tell what the color means. And I think the B, if, I think the B, it says in progress, but I have already reserved these prior. 
and it just brought it up by itself saying, I still haven't gotten these completed. So you can see that the baptism and confirmation was done in the Manti temple, February, 2018, but I have, it, those are my names. So I have already requested this first person and they're reserved under my name and they're actually giving us ample time, June 15th of 2023 to get these ordinances done. But I can tell now that I am doing an initiatory in the order of those. Um, so, you know, I'm happy with this so that I would go ahead and grab that one. I, I'm, you know, I'm comfortable with that. I will go back to these. Um, McEwen is a family name. So possibly that one. And if I just were to do a quick check, I think this one only has two sources and I remember them that being the same source of um, a census record. So, you know, you still could do a lot of work trying to find their birth certificates or whatever, but looking at the ordinances and, and see here, let me say one more thing. She was born in 1909. So you guys can please help me out as well. But I believe that if they're a hundred years, I, that would make, I would assume, a hundred over a hundred years from when she passed away that allows me to be able to do this work it's 110 now 110 so i'm i'm guessing because it let me take it at 100 if it was 1909 you're so still that okay 2009 you're still okay i'm still okay to do this ordinance so um and again, this one was completed in Texas, the baptism and confirmation. And this has been request, has a request with a name of someone who did this, but it looks like they shared these names with the temple. And that is why it's allowing me to go ahead and, and um, request these so that I could print them out and do these, do these ordinances. Um, I will also make a comment that I'll go back to this page that I think it was Brother Hobbs told me that when you go to print out, or maybe it was our meeting the other day. Yeah. Anyway, if you, if you go to print out a name, you used to print out the card and it would show all the different ordinances that you could do for that one card. You're requesting, I guess, all of them, but now they're only going to print out the card for the ordinance that you want to do. So if I got these, these would only show, um, I want to really, I don't want to take a bunch of time, but I just want to make sure I haven't checked these last three. I just want to make sure that I'm comfortable that I'm doing it in order. This has five sources. So I, I'm not even looking at those sources, which I would normally take the time to do that. I, um, I'm confident that there's sources in there that will document that she is who she is. Does that make sense to you, Susan? And yeah. And these look like we've got the baptism and confirmation. So initiatory again was shared with the temple by this person. So I feel comfortable with that one. I'll go back up to those others. So that's the first three. I think that I would, and I think that if I'm my sister, yay, just got back to the temple. And and she, the first time she went, she was able to do initiatory. And I think she said that she could do five. Ini initiatory can be requested. How come it's not? Oh, I was supposed to click the name. So you can see the baptism and confirmation is done. So I feel comfortable with that one. I don't know why it didn't pull up the whole thing, but I can do this one. I didn't check sources. So do you feel like that I would, could feel comfortable in, in grabbing these? I want to kind of go to her and I, I don't know, help me out <laughs> in, is there a place that I can see how I'm related to these? I it was a, it, like it was a choice right there that said, how are you related? Over on the side, it's probably hidden by our faces. I don't even have your faces on here at all. Oh. It, you're, I can't see you at all. Up at the top of that page, 
look over at the far right side. Does it say how? Well, view relationship. View my relationship. Do you see this then right here, right? That I'm circling? It's covered by faces on mine. So. Oh, okay, but it's there. So I'm going to click on it. Let's just see. So there I am. It's on my, then that's my dad. Okay, how do I do this? And pull it down. One finger. I'm trying to figure. Oh, there we go. His mother. So I am related there as well, at least through marriage. So I would take the time to do that as well on each one of these and make sure that they're, that the initiatory is in order. And I am feeling really confident. Is there any reason any of you would not feel confident with me just selecting those names? I'm trying to get back to my main one. I did find something else on the, uh, the temple page today. Um, uh -huh. You go to the thing that says my reservations on the left side. Right here, my reservations. Yeah. Oh, I could have done it right here. I don't know why it says zero because I, oh, there it is. It's working okay. on it. Okay, there it is. And then you can do the filter. Um, and one of the things that shows, I don't know if it will do it on your Chromebook, but you can choose um, the next ordin ordinance needed and just sort by that. This is new to me. So print, not printed, waited. So keep going down. It says filter by ordinance. Filter by ordinance. So. But go yeah, back, well, I go back I up. And I think one of the filters, let me move our faces. Date expires, date reserved. Okay, above that, it says the very perform top, next. perform next. So let's just click that and see what happens. And then you can see all the ones that need initiatory next. And you can also filter it by gender. So you can say, I want only the women to show first. How can I tell by what's showing here that if it's, if it is the initiator, I mean, I know this name because that's the one I just looked up, but how okay. can I? Look right under her little face says I. I initiatory. Initiatory yeah. is the next ordinance that needs to be done for her. Okay, so I have a lot of male names, but then I could just go click and then it would allow me to print it if I did it this way. But these are the ones then that I have reserved versus grabbing the five that it prepared for me. Right. Because. And when it grabs those, it looks first at your list and takes anything there that's ready. Which is why this one was ready for initiatory, but then it also added the other ones. So yeah. awesome. Okay, well, thanks for you taught me something tonight. Now it's wonderful. I just learned that today because that's new. I hadn't seen it before. So. All right. I really like that. I was going to go and just show how to grab those ordinances that I had just done. Uh oh. It... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for what? Now you have to find them again. It's a, oh, that's a, no big deal. So the, the McEwen is still the same name. These are still the same names, I think. Yeah. So if I say, okay, that's the first thing I want to do when our temple opens as they slowly open temples. I heard the Bountiful Temple opened uh, up this last week. Heard that from a cousin. So I wonder if they're moving from north to the south by weeks. I don't know. Anyway, they're taking time. Um, so if I just hit that take to the temple, the only problem is, this is going to be my problem, is that I can't print these. So I'm going to exit out of this because I'm on my Chromebook and I can't print. I have to be or on my you can laptop. print it to PDF and then print it later when you get home. But I can't, if I do that, like Chromebooks don't save like a computer saves things. Oh, okay. So I don't want to do this, but the picture still shows all the ordinances there. So I'm not sure what it's going to look like now, but they said it would only be one ordinance at a time that would be printed on that card. So I guess if we want to follow it 
an ancestor through to they're done, we will be printing out that card multiple times as we do different ordinances for them, right? Okay. Yes, and they did tell us that you don't get your cards back anymore, so. Oh, that's right. So keep track. Okay, so that's right. So if I, I don't know. Okay, so I was also gonna show how to do this same process on my phone, but I really can't even get the thing to work in my sister's house. I'm in Arizona tonight and I don't even know how to get my phone to pull up, but it is just the same process um, in when you pull it up to look at the three lines and go to temple and then and then you can get into the ordinance ready um, part of this. So it's really easy to do on your phone. You just don't get a printout. Well, I don't know how to do that. Print out from your phone, but you can certainly reserve names from there. So look at, I think it, did it give me these names? McEwen, here's my five names that are now in this same list, my reservation. So they're reserved. I just need to go home and print them out and then they'll be ready. So any questions that I we, we can answer before Susan goes on? All right, I'm gonna see if, how do I get back to my Zoom meeting? Oh, there we go. Now I'm back to my Zoom. So Susan, I will make you, I will go back and make you a host. All right, thanks. Yes, we have a quick question. On, sure. I think I saw this maybe on yours too, but I've got one pulled up. And uh, same thing, baptism confirmation are completed, shows initiatory, initiatory and endowment ready. It also shows that this person is currently sealed to their spouse that happened before they were even baptized how does that happen so i saw that on mine on one of those that i had looked at it showed that same situation and what we have been taught or counseled is that you still go ahead and finish those ordinances and it really isn't taking effect until those other ordinances are done I don't think it changes the date at all, but you just try to do it in order. And and like I said, those sometimes, I, initially when I was grabbing names like that, I didn't even stop to check the details at all. And I found that I had done that, that I had done an endowment before the initiatory was done or something. But I had one the same thing. It was already sealed to the spouse without the you know done in the proper order we just want to try to do that in the proper order anything else susan was that correct yeah um sometimes that happens because they used to do record extraction and maybe they would go through and find marriage records and so they would enter those into the church system and those would be names that were sent to the temple for sealings and nobody was doing research to find out all the rest, you know, who their parents are, who their children are. All they were doing was the ceiling. Oh, also, Joan, you, you said you were dying to get to the, to the temple. I think a lot of other people are dying to get to the temple too. Yeah, so we take <laughs> All these their people we're looking at. They already have. <laughs> They're still waiting, yeah. They're literally yeah. dying to get to the yeah, temple. Yeah, funny. Joan, we're still seeing your screen. Can you click on the stop share? The green? The red. It says stop share. Oh, up at the very top. Yeah. Okay. Better? All right. Thank you. Because I'm sitting here playing around trying to get my screen back to normal. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Now, if I can figure out how to share my screen. Okay. Um, 
Now this is a little bit different way if you're wanting to research and find your own person. Um, I typically will do an en entire line and then go out and do their children and try and find their children's wives so that I know that the whole family is taken care of. Um, if you're looking specifically for temples, I would go back. So here's my second great grandfather. He was born in 1817. So that gives me a couple of generations to work with where I don't have to worry about permission if I do find someone that needs temple work. So we're gonna click on him and do his tree. So he becomes the main person in the tree. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that's what was supposed to happen anyway. There he is. Okay. And then up here in the right corner, instead of landscape, I'm going to do this option that says descendancy. Now, John B. Miller had 13 children. So I thought it's pretty likely that I can find somebody here. Um, these little arrows indicate that they have children also. Some of these I know, like William, he died the same year he was born. John was, anyway, not very old when he died. And anyway, so I'm going to try this one. Um, So I was looking down here, Benjamin F. Miller, we don't know much about him. Um, we don't know when he died. So I thought I would check into him. And it does show that he needs his temple work done. So let me go to him. And there's not a lot of information information on him. It shows his birth date, but that's about all. It doesn't show a spouse or anything. So I'm going to search records. Because even though it shows that his temple work needs to be done, I need to make sure that um, he didn't die as a child because then all he needs is to be sealed to his parents. So, and you can tell I, I did this earlier. Um, this I know is his family. So I'm going to click on that. And um, well, there are some things I wanted to tell you. If, if you're starting from scratch with this and going back and then working forward again, I typically will print out a family group record and then so back at that John B. Miller, my second great grandfather, I would print out his family group record and I'll show you how to do that. Because um, you can do it right from family search here. And then check all the censuses through their life that you can find. And that's so that you can find any additional children that may not be on here. Um, Okay, so here's Benjamin. I know that this is his mother. His, it shows his dad has passed away. Um, but here he is, he's 19. So I know that he at least lived long enough that he would need to be baptized. So I would review and attach this record to him that we did that last time, so I won't go through that this time. Anyway, but I do know now that he needs that done for him. So I'll go back up to here to his main page and click on ordinances. And like Jones, my sister has reserved them um, just a couple months ago, but she doesn't get to the temple as often as I do. And so I could go ahead and request whatever I wanted of these. And where they're making it so readily 
available and the things that Joan showed us, um, more and more of these are already requested. Um, and then where I, if I were to continue with this, I would look and try to find his wife and see if I can find a marriage record and then continue on from there. I did look for that. There's a lot of Benjamin F. Millers. And so I would need to try and follow several of those through so that I can um, figure out which one is the right wife for him. So doing that, um, or maybe he died after that census was taken. So I try to find a death record, maybe look at where his parents are buried and see if he's buried near them. If he died before he was married, that, that would be a likely place to find him. So those are the things that I would try to look for after I did um, reserve the ordinances for him, I would go ahead and try and fill things out because he needs a wife. If he's got one, we want to make sure she's there with him. So I noticed that they're in the United States. You're so you're not overseas or somewhere. Maybe it'll be easier to find those things. Maybe. Well, I did oh. some a little bit of looking and, and didn't find them the next census quickly. So that's why I thought maybe I'll, I'll have to look for death records or look for some other things to see if I can find where he's buried. So anyway, so that's, that's what we have for today. Um, I know that was kind of quick going through that. Are there any questions? Yeah, I've got one. So you were just showing us how some of the names said reserved, but you could request them. So does that mean the person that reserved them would have to give permission or how does that work? No, that person has reserved them, but shared them with the temple. So if someone wants to say, I want to do that name, you can request that specific name. Oh, okay. I tried to do that once someone grabbed my grandfather for something and I contacted her through that you know their email addresses on there and I contacted them and I you know just said please please let me do it and all my we played we played email tag back and forth and, back, and I couldn't ever grab it so yeah. it might still not be done for all I know but she was willing to give it to me but I couldn't figure it out so maybe I should have said on this date, share it with the temple and I'll go in and I will request it back. <laughs> you know? So I don't know. Anyway, it can be tricky sometimes. It was for me. Brother McGee, did we help you get some ideas there? I think so. Um, I think my problem is I want to get to living members and in order to do that, you actually have to go talk to those living people. Um, the last time I took a child to get their wisdom teeth pulled, the doctor had married a McGee from Spanish Fork. Well, I don't know any McGee's in Spanish Fork. In fact, they own the McGee stamp on State Street. And I don't know who those people are. They're not, they're not from my dad's immediate brother. Could be from his half brother or it could be cousins of his. So I don't know where that line comes from. And to get live people, I, I have to go talk to those people. But if I wanted to go back another generation, I, I could probably find some people to see where they're at. And that, that was very helpful to, to pull it forward. Um, so if you're wanting to take, did you get the information on the live people? Uh, no, I haven't. Because um, if, if you can get like their full name and maybe their parents' names, and if you have that ancestry um, link to your family search, ancestry is pretty easy to find live people because they have yearbook 
things and they'll have birth records and things like that. Um, and you may be able to work back from their names and find where you tie in. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think it goes actually back to my great grandfather. He had like eight, eight sons and there's quite a number of those that uh, came to Utah with their brothers, so. So maybe go back to him and then just start working forward each family and yeah. go forward as far as you can and then go to the next son and do the same thing. I have to look into that. So yeah. I took, Take time. I took the family rec, you know, the family group sheet and decided to just document all of my family. So I started with my mom and dad and I have a sheet for each of my siblings and myself. And then I made a sheet for each of the living kids. And then I added their marriages. I think I'm a few children have been born that I have not added to those because it got stuck somewhere and I just found it the other day. So even though I'm not adding that on family search for all those living, I've got that document to help me work off of. It's yeah. kind of nice to have. My oldest brother has done that for our family and I need to just get him to send me those a copy of those records or something. Well, I was going to show you, and I'll have to do this real quick. I was going to show you how to print the family group sheet from Family Search. So let me share my screen again, real quick. Scoot you guys up here. Okay, over here on the right hand side, there's a thing that says print. And so you can see it says family and his won't be very big. This is that Benjamin F. Miller. But then it just lets you do that and print it out. You can write in what you find. So that makes it really easy to do. Well, how do you feel about I know that if you input someone who's living, because if that's where you're looking at going forward, um, how do you feel about, about, I went in and added my family, these sheets in there, because once they pass away, now you're having to merge all those things, right? Yeah. So I don't know if it's, do they recommend you do that or not do that? I know on Ancestry, you can do that. Well, if they search, if you have a private um, tree, then I would go ahead and put all your live people on. But in family search, it doesn't show them as long as there's not a death date attached. If they're living, no one else can see what you've entered. So you think it's an okay thing to do? Yeah, although I don't know that I would put all my children and grandchildren in. That's what I'm wondering my my nieces and nephews and all of that no i i don't think i would i mean the main okay. purpose for family search is to find ancestors okay i haven't done it obviously i just keep wanting to but then i don't so awesome thank you susan you helped me learn a few things tonight good all right so did you play around with your pedigree charts this last month and look at things? I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done any of that. I've been too busy driving buses at all times of the day and night. And <laughs> by the time I'm done with that, I'm kind of wiped out. Yeah. I think it would be fun sometime to have now that we can meet live to find a time when we can bring some of this and kind of work together on stuff. Have everybody bring their laptop if they've got one and mm -hmm. just work on it. Instead of listen and then try and do it later. So. I think it'd be fun. So I don't know. Anyway. Maybe All right. For something when we're a little bit more open, when we're back to church for the full two hours and our restrictions yeah. are still a little bit if they are letting you reserve the building 
like yeah. the cultural hall could set up a table, a lot of different tables, so you're still distancing. I don't know.